After baking our maps, we are now ready to go to paint now this toothbrush. And there are different approaches how you can do something like that. So for the first step, I would say, let's go here to the layers. And I like to start with the base layer. And one important thing I've learned over the time inside of Substance Painter is that in a base layer, I try really to add all the channels which you later have in your export to this base layer. Also, if they are empty, only to make sure that everything is set somehow and nothing is undefined. And for a toothbrush like this, this can be a brown fill layer or something like that. And let's test this first and then I show you another way of working with that. So let's remove this paint layer for now. And I go here to this little paint bucket and click here. So we get a fill layer. And the fill layers are a really special layer inside of Substance Painter because you can't paint on them. So if you try this here, you will get a message that a fill layer is not paintable. And the idea behind a fill layer is that you take a material, which you define here in this section here, or you can use a material here from your material library. And you can change this material if you like or if you have parameters because these materials are really often made in Substance Designer and so the author has exposed you parameters and then you work from this point on. So let's make this fill layer here, name it BG like background. And I want to first show you how a standard material works inside now of this workflow. For this we go into the properties. And like I've said here under the material section, you have the channels which you want to activate. And because this is my BG, I activate all of them. If you otherwise deactivate channels here, you see they are vanishing here from the interface. Then in this section here, we can have now a predefined material, which are these materials. You can drag them here onto this area here, or you click here and then you get a mini browser where you have the same like in the shelf. And here's the material section which you can now build. And every of these channels here, for example, this is the area for the base color, can have a texture which you previously loaded into your shelf. You see here you go back into this mini browser, into the procedures and the textures. And if you have loaded something into that, you can reference it here. Or you can define a color. So if I want now, for example, to define a color, I click here and now I go here into the colors. I search here for something brownish and we say, yeah, this brown here is exactly what we want here. Now we have this brown here and you will see that we have here a speck and it's really soft here. And so the next step maybe is then the roughness. This is roughness. So black means it isn't rough at all. So it's really shiny. You see here now the reflection going on. And if you bring it up to one white, this is absolutely not shiny. So it's diffuse. And you can now define how much shininess you want to have. And you see it changes here. Let's go here first to no roughness. And you will see that there's something in the reflection. The question is, what is reflecting here? If you take a look into this viewport and its settings, you will see that we have an HDR setup going on here. So on the right side here, you have here the shader settings, the display settings, and so on. And we go here into the display settings. This is this little monitor here. We have three sections for the camera, for uh, the viewport itself, and here for the environment. And there you see that we have an environment map active. It's named Panorama, outdated. And to make it visible, you can increase here the environment opacity to one. And now you see there is an environment, but it's really blurry. The reason for this is that we have here an environment blur going on. And if I remove that here, you see this is the map which reflects now on the surface here. And it's really distracting to see it all the time. So the reason why it was blurred and changed in the opacity is that you don't be distracted here. If you want to change it again, you can click here to get a mini browser or you can go here into your shelf onto the environments. Here are your environment maps. You can import your own, but if you now have the feeling, okay, I want to have this toothbrush later in a scene which has a more a studio setup, you can, for example, take a studio here, Studio 5, and you can drag and drop it here onto the slot. So you make a connection, you see it with a little plus sign, or you can also drag it here into 
the background and now you see a studio setup going on. And this is a really important test, which you normally do if you make game assets. You test it in different environments so that everything is visible for the player all the time. So for example, this bus garage here is a little bit darker and this would be a test here. If you ever want to rotate your environment map, you can hold down the shift key and the right mouse button in the viewport. And so you rotate the whole thing. And this is important if I want to see something in the front or the back. All these reflections, the lighting, and also this manipulation here now of the rotation and so on will also work if you bring now these settings back. So if I now blur this again here, you see nothing changes here. It's not blurry on the reflection. And also if you bring down the opacity, it's absolutely the same. So I make a little bit of opacity here. I blur it a lot so that I only have a feedback here from the background. And then I search for something which I like, which is really neutral. Let's go back here to our studio, drag it in. And yeah, if I now want to rotate it, I use our now learned keyboard shortcut shift right mouse button to rotate it now into the right direction. So that's here. Then we can activate shadows if we want, but we only have one object. So shadow doesn't make too much sense. So let's leave this here now. And our background is now back here. And now we can think about, okay, how rough this should be. And I bring it up here now. And now I can rotate it and test how it behaves in the light. And the other things here are really important, but not for our case. If you have something which is metallic, you have to bring it from zero, which is black to one. But in our case, it's good. So no metallic at all. And the height is only um, yeah, visible if you have something which is changing. So let's try this really fast so that you also see something like that here. Let's go here, for example, to the procedurals, a really strong area of Substance Painter here. You see all these cool maps here. And I want to use yeah, here something wild. Let's go here to a grunge map like this here. And to change now the height, I can move it up and down and it will work, but you don't see it in the viewport because everything on the whole surface is the same. So let's reset it here to zero. And instead of using now this slider, we use here this texture input. So take, for example, now this grunge dirt here and drag it here to the height slot. And now you see that this here now changes the height. And yeah, this dialog grows. But if you collapse here the parameters, you see this is now the input instead of this slider here. It now uses the grayscale information here. So now you have a really crunched surface. And if you get rid of that, click here and that's it.